Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the evident uh, webinar for uh, dentists and laboratories and and uh, some of the leading companies in dentistry today. And it's really a pleasure for me to introduce our guests today. And by the way, my, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Paulo Kalau. I'm the CEO of Evident. And we're in the business of really, I, if I digest it, our business at Evident is about connecting companies and dentists and labs that are digital. So we provide a design service that converts files that they're scanned by dentists, laboratories. We design them and then they're outputted into printers, mills, or whatever the industry needs. And it's really my pleasure to be at the crux of this discussion today because I've got two people that I admire immensely, you know, given the thousands of people we deal with and thousands of units we produce every day. There's a couple of people here that I admire a lot, and I'll tell you why. I mean, first, I'd love to introduce Dr. Chris Baer from Colorado. Some of you guys have, have, have uh, listened to his webinars before. But he, here's why Chris is special uh, in my eyes. We deal with a lot of dentists, and we deal with dentists from all over the world who send us their digital files. We design them into whether it's a crown, bridge, splint, what have you. And then they either send it to a lab or, or, or uh, produce it in their mill or printer. And in my mind, Chris understands how to incorporate digital technology into his practice. And he does it in a way that makes it so simple. You know, you know how we get a lot of talking heads in the, in the dental industry, <laughs> but I mean, in this situation, you go to Chris's practice and you actually see what he's doing and how how easy he's made it, you know? So Chris, I bragged about you a bit, but thanks again for taking time and joining us. Yeah, you bet I'm happy to. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, aside from the fact that, uh, you know, you're an overall cool guy and uh, you know, all that nice stuff. So, and then of course, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Giorgio Haddad, who's the head of strategic partnerships for Formlabs. And I'll tell you why I'm excited about Form Labs. We get a bunch of printers here at Evident. You know, I, it, it's quite interesting because manufacturers actually send us printers and say, okay, test it out. And they send boxes show up and, you know, everyone's always excited to test out the newest printer. But in the Evident office, we have a Form Labs printer that when we say, okay, let's see if we can test something we can validate the design or, or do some R&D. The go-to printer is always a Formlabs printer. And it's not me forcing people to do it. It's because we have a, a lot of people here who are non-dental engineers, you know, software people, marketing people. And when we want to print something out, they'll go, okay, let's fire up the Formlabs. And if the material's not available in the form lab, that's the only time they look at other printers. And so I'm super excited to have Georgia Haddad, uh, who's the head of strategic partnerships at Form Labs, because I mean, Georgia, you guys have made this thing so simple to use. I just want to know what, like, what were you guys thinking and how'd you get there? Yeah, Paolo, thanks for the kind uh, introduction. Um, it's a pleasure to be on this webinar with you and Dr. Bayer today. I think uh, it's going to be uh, loads of fun. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's actually a funny story, I would say, like that kind of mixes my story with digital dentistry and, and how I encountered Formlabs myself and ended up at Formlabs. Um, so it, it all started in 2012 with Formlabs with the Kickstarter campaign where uh, young uh, people from MIT just wanted to change the world and disrupt the 3D printing industry and said, hey, you know what, uh, we can produce the same quality as these super expensive 3D printers, put it in a small package, put it on the desktop and have high-end parts produced out of that. And in 2012, there was back then the Form 1 from Formlabs. And then uh, back then I was on my second year of mechanical engineering school back home in Beirut. And then sooner after that, I, I graduated with my mechanical engineering degree and somehow ended up in the digital dentistry industry working for a reseller back in Lebanon. 
And I had the chance to interact with many suppliers and leaders in digital dentistry who were our suppliers back then. And then uh, there was an obvious problem, which is the chicken and egg problem that was between intraoral scanning and 3D printing. We had to sell intraoral scanners, but if the labs didn't have 3D printers, the dentist wouldn't buy an intraoral scanner. And for a lab to justify back then purchasing a 3D printer, that was, that was crazy. It was $50,000, $100,000, very hard to operate, not user-friendly. So I was always in the search of that solution and that miracle that will come where we can say, hey, labs, take that 3D printer. It's easy to use. It's not very expensive. And then you can solve that chicken and egg problem for your dentist. And then we can also sell more <laughs> intraoral scanners on the other side. Uh, and then the form labs happened. <laughs> I was in IDS in Cologne in 2017, uh, visiting, not as a form link, not as part of form labs. And there was this huge rush uh, on form labs uh, booth. Back then, nothing specific to dentistry. It was just like an engineering focused 3D printer. And in 2017, it was an eye opener. Everybody in the dental industry wanted this affordable desktop printer that can produce dental uh, quality parts. Um, so yeah, that's, that was the eye opener. Back then I, I got the dealership for, for Form Labs, started selling intraoral scanners by, 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 by hundreds, let's say, just because we have now the solution to this again chicken problem, which is an affordable 3D printer that is super user-friendly that can do everything. And yeah, since then I moved to Berlin for Form Labs and uh, uh, and a lot has changed since then. Uh, Formlabs now has a specific dental business unit where we produce in-house resins and materials as well as third-party resins, um, a specific 3D printer for dental. And we have a group of dental specialists trying to focus as much as possible on delivering uh, quality and value to our dental customers. So that's a bit like the link to the, to the story and to why I'm here with you guys. And it's a pleasure. So, so what you're telling us is Kickstarter campaigns are actually legit. Because look at the, <laughs> look at four yeah, look at what it, it <laughs> actually <laughs> works. Believe it or not. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, just so we have an idea of what everyone's uh, level of experience and expertise is, I'm going to post a couple of polls. Uh, and so the first one is. Do you own an intraoral scanner? So we know uh, uh, we know how to adjust our messaging and, and content to make sure that you benefit from, from uh, the next hour. Or do you own a 3D printer? And based on your answers, you know, it tells us the level of complexity we'll touch on as, as we go through 3D printing with, with Form Labs and uh, Dr. Bayer. So yeah, and while they're doing that. One of the things that people who are watching might want to watch too that's on Netflix is the Print the Legend documentary. That's awesome because it talks <laughs> about the history of 3D printing and Form Labs is in there. I think that's just fun. It's a fun movie to watch. I remember sitting down yeah. and watching it before I started 3D printing and it was really neat just to see the evolution of things and then to know how far things have come from there till now is amazing in just a short period of time. Well, uh, uh, first we have a, a very knowledgeable audience. So, awesome. you know, 69 to 79% uh, on the 3D printer and a scanner. So that's awesome. We know where, where to take this. And thanks for answering the poll. You know, yeah. and, and second, yeah. uh, Chris, I really appreciate you sending me those 3D printing files because aside from dentistry, we come up with different things to 3D print. And uh, Chris has an awesome library of parts for cars, for <laughs> bikes, for toys that you can 3D print with the, with the files you that you, you send us. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, I guess the, the, the first question I had is, like in, in your eyes, uh, Dr. Bayer, what is 3D printing and why did you get a printer? Well, 3D printing as far as, you know, the, the historical background and everything, it's basically just taking if you think about a piece of paper that comes out of a printer, you've got one layer and then you're printing another layer as that piece of paper slides out, but all of those pages are stacked up. So what the printer's doing is it's laying down a foundation and 
depending on the, the style of printer, how that works, it's using droplets and it's polymerizing that resin and building a design, whether it's like you said, a car part, a dental model. And specifically for this, what I saw as the evolution when I started looking into 3D printing was kind of what's happened is being able to, to take a diagnostic model, something that you could manufacture pretty quick. Because a lot of times for additive manufacturing where you're building things drop by drop or brick by brick, it's a lot faster of a process than going in and doing it subtractively if you're going in to try to mill something. And so being able to have a 3D printer facilitated a lot of things for us. And then over time, it's made things a lot more efficient. So for building things like night guards, we can have a night guard turned around the same day for a patient versus sending it out to a lab and having to wait, you know, potentially a week to two weeks to get something back. And, you know, when you have a patient that's in pain, a couple of days can be a huge difference for them. And if you can do it in the same day, they walk in in pain and you give them a splint and they can start healing, that's a huge benefit. And so that's one of the big reasons why we brought 3D printing into the practice. And two, you know, there's a cool factor. Patients love seeing this model coming out of a, a big vat of resin and they think that that's really neat. And to be able to show them, you know, a digital model of their teeth, you could, you know, you could drop the model for a lot of them and there's not gonna be any chippage or breakage on it versus a stone model, oops, it fell off the counter, model's destroyed. If the 3D model breaks, it's not a big deal, you can just print another one. So there were huge benefits for us to be able to do that. Yeah, uh, that's a very good Georgia? point. Georgia? When, yeah, when, when, when we kind of look at the applications and, and how we kind of segment which kind of applications and materials are enabled with 3D printing, we, we can see four different categories. Like one, one category is, is, is very kind of important is that we enable some applications that wouldn't have been possible with alternative manufacturing techniques. Um, I would say like surgical guides, for example, it's quite complicated to do subtractive manufacturing. So it's just very cost effective to 3D print those. Um, aligners for thermoforming, um, uh, thermoforming aligners on 3D printed models. That's also a whole industry built around 3D printing. So that's kind of a first category of those applications. And a second um, uh, uh, category is what, uh, where we add value to existing applications. So whether it's 3D printing temporary uh, crowns and bridges or printing castable frameworks to, to cast them. So that's like a second category where we improve on conventional and traditional process. And the third one is where 3D printing comes with a groundbreaking innovation that kind of um, changes the way that practitioners work. You can think of dentures in that case or actually permanent crown resin, which we recently released that enables you to 3D print a permanent restoration. And finally, you have the category X where users just get the resin and do whatever crazy innovation they come up with. So this is kind of how we, we look at those applications and each one has like their uh, basically, uh, yeah, innovative part, so. And as uh, Giorgio can attest, uh, once in a while he gets an email from me saying, I've asked our R&D <laughs> department to analyze this. Can you, uh, send me a couple of resins that you think will work for this purpose, right? And, uh, you know, I, I, Thank I'm you, sure you, you have copies to reply of my on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a couple of questions here from the attendees. And by the way, guys, we've got uh, uh, labs and dentists listening to us and we design for everyone. We're an agnostic design company. Having said that, my heart I've owned uh, through my career over 50 laboratories. And so I am a lab guy by heart. Wow. And, you know, part of the discussion in the industry is uh, how is 3D printing going to challenge uh, the lab industry? And if you're a lab guy listening right now, it's really important to understand the dynamics in play so that you can evolve your business for what may happen five, 10, 15 years from now, you know? And so to me, that's the, the value in listening to us today. And then if you're a dentist, it also opens up the opportunities for you to evolve your practice five, 10, 15 uh, years from now. Because what's obvious is 
COVID has accelerated the digitization of the industry. Uh, that's, I mean, beyond dispute at this point in time. And so it's not the question of whether it's going to happen. It's a question of how does everyone evolve to carve their segment in that space? So, I mean, and it's a question I, I post to you guys. Well, the first question here, for example, I'm looking to start 3D printing with, uh, I'm looking to start 3D printing. What treatments should I start with? And it's a great question. I mean, Chris, what would you say? I think, you know, first and foremost is dialing in just diagnostic models. If you're already scanning, which it looks like a majority of the, the audience is, just start printing those models. You know, you can give them to patients. You can make whitening trays. I mean, that's a cost-effective way to, to start getting back a return on your investment and then having the staff go through the process because there is a process for manufacturing. You're, you're bringing manufacturing into your office and somebody's going to have to be responsible for that. So there's, there's kind of the technical integration piece and then there's the manufacturing integration piece and the technical part we can talk about a little bit further and, and where Evident fits into that and how Form Labs has partnered and being able to, to facilitate that in a practice and take the guesswork out. But you know, start with that and then you can dial you can dial it in with say night guards. I think night guards are something that everybody that I talk to just wants to know how to do. They're like, oh I just I you know I just want to bring in night guards. I want to do that. And if that's all you use the 3D printer for, that's perfectly fine. But you need to know how to get, you know, a diagnostic model out and then be able to get a night guard. And then you can kind of meld those two together. You'll be able to test the fit of the night guard on the 3D printed model. And you'll know kind of how that correlates with, you know, your design and how it's going to fit in the patient's mouth. And then that way you can, you, know, you have to dial that in and you can make it a seamless process. And for now, like we don't schedule more than 30 minutes for a seat, knowing that it's probably gonna be less than five minutes of adjustment because we've got things dialed in. And if it starts to take more than that, then we know something's not right. Maybe somebody didn't scan something or something happened with the design aspect of it. Um, but you can, you can make it a very predictable part of the practice, but you have to know all of those steps. And so starting with something simple that's maybe not gonna go into the mouth directly other than like a whitening tray, I think is an easy initiation point. So you can learn the steps of, you know, how is the printer gonna work? How much time does it take to print a model? How much time is it gonna take to wash it? How much time does it take to cure it? And all of that and how the different resins work. You know, you, you're gonna have to have different tanks for different resins, things like that, figuring out how it's gonna flow in your particular practice. And maybe you wanna buy two 3D printers so that you can print you know, just one material on one machine and then use the other machine to, to print stuff at the same time. So you're not waiting for the 3D printer to finish with one resin so you can swap it out to start printing other stuff. No, that, that's a good yeah, point. There's a, yeah, sorry, Giorgio, go ahead. Yeah, we see many of our users in clinic or labs uh, kind of dedicating each printer for certain materials. And the point is that in that case, form labs printers are affordable enough to justify kind of um, uh, specializing one printer and to print certain material and another one for the other material to streamline, streamline your workflow. Definitely. I mean, it's a good 100 idea. I 100% agree with you guys too. I mean, to me, a 3D printer is a resin tank that prints. And it all depends on what materials uh, you're going to print. Because if you have to change resins through the day, it takes a lot of time and you know storage and all of that. So, I mean, from my perspective, uh, setting up multiple 3D printers for the materials you print the most is really the most efficient way of, of uh, approaching 3D printing, but that's me. Uh, there's a couple of questions here. Uh, do you print the model to place the sprint on uh, a splint on for post cure? No, no, that's we don't do we we hardly do models anymore. The only time we print a model for like to test the night guard seat is one if we've got a question about something for some reason if there was something that we saw on the scan um, or if we're going to print the model like let's say. A lot of times we'll we'll offer a discount for whitening trays if we're doing a scan for a night guard because we're already going to have that scan and it's it's so cheap to print a model we can do that and then we'll test fit the appliance on there and deliver it and then we give the the models to the patient just as a, a gift if you will they've got that um and you know 
being able to have it, you don't need to cure it on the model. You just basically take the design and actually I have one here that we just worked on this morning. You pop it off the platform. And so it's built with all these little supports and you just drop this in to the curing oven and that sits in there like that. And then you, you take off the supports before you cure it is usually the easiest way. Otherwise, once they're hardened, they're a little bit more challenging to get off, but you just clip them off with the pair of scissors that like with Formlabs printer, they provide all that. So you can just trim it off real easy. And then it goes into the curing oven and then it's hardened. And it looked like there was a question about the, the clarity of the, the night guards too, I can adjust. So these are pretty crystal clear. It really just depends on how you're, you're polishing them and what material. This is the Formlabs um, Dental LT resin version two. And they've done a wonderful job with that. And I was impressed with how well it polished. And it's just using the right tools and going in and then just trimming it. And then we use pumice to go over it. And then we use um, a product called Fabuloso and that makes them sparkle. I mean, they're crystal clear. So I think I don't have any issue with that, but um, that may be a, a difference in how somebody's processing it. And maybe if their uh, isopropyl alcohol tank isn't clean too, that could cause some contamination as well. And uh, the comment I'm going to, to throw in there is uh, what's very important if you're going to uh, outsource a design to, to a group like us at Evident, is just calibrating those parameters. And that does take some pre-work. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, to your point, Chris, you, you don't print a model, but you've done the calibration so you understand what the parameters are. And then you send those parameters to us so that it's built into your profile. And a lot of people skip that step and then they're trying to figure out why, you know, the, the whatever they've, they're 3D printed isn't fitting exactly the way they want it. So it does take a few trials just to make sure we've calibrated the parameters properly. And I mean, the Formlabs guys have done a great job of uh, actually building that in, in into evident. And so it makes it easy if you're using a, a form labs printer but if you're using someone else's printer you know we do have to spend some time just to make sure that the the what the printout is prints to yeah, the spec that, that you've asked they're all not the same you know it's it's not yeah. like you know you buy one 3d printer and they all print the same the materials you use are different and even if you take a form labs resin and use it in somebody else's printer doesn't mean you're going to get the same results as if you used it in the form labs printer itself there's going to be a calibration point that you have to assess to really dial things in and i think that's where one of the huge benefits of, of working with evident is you guys know how to do that. And it's just like, if you worked with a brand new lab, you know, you've got to go through a couple cases to dial things in, fit of your crowns, all that stuff that we've all done as clinicians before, you know, there's going to be a little trial and error and you have to get in there and dial that in. And, you know, either you have to take on that tech responsibility all your own, like I did at the beginning because we didn't have services like you guys have now. And so that's a big component to it. And so if you don't have the time or desire to do that, you're going to have to outsource that and work with somebody like, Apollo and evident to be able to do that and get things dialed in. Otherwise you're going to be wasting a lot of money and material, get frustrated and say, oh, this doesn't fit. It's the printer's fault or it's the resin's fault, you know, and it's not going to be the case. It's just, you didn't take the time to dial everything in. Um, we've got a few questions on the go. So uh, I, I think the next step is maybe to just power through these if you guys are okay with it. Sure. So that uh, yeah. we're responsive to the audience that uh, uh, that they're listening now. So I've got eight live questions, uh, <laughs> and let, let's go through all of them. Uh, we answered the. I'm looking to uh, start 3D printing. What treatments should I start with? Uh, and your suggestion was night guards, occlusal guards, splints. Is that yeah. that's the easiest uh, way and uh, certainly the, the least stressful way to get into it. Um, what printers have you used and can you recommend me one? You want me to take that one? Uh, yeah. um, it says I started, there. <laughs> yeah, I started out with the Formlabs 2 and that was a great printer for me. I mean, it was, it was a workhorse. It's, we still have it in service. So again, we've got a couple different printers and that was pretty easy to use. There were some things that they've changed with the Form 3 now which are amazing. And even just the resin tank storage, being able to swap stuff out, that's that's really easy. 
I really like the tanks that go in the back and then the fact that the machine itself stirs the resin so you're not having to go in and stir it yourself the the next dent 5100 that i have we have to do that in that particular one and so that's a little annoying but um you know the form three is so simple and easy to use i think that's a go-to you know that, that's a no-brainer if i had to go out and buy one today that would be the first one that would be top on my list you know i think they've made it at a price point that's super affordable all of the materials that you need to get they're really affordable looking at resin tank costs and stuff and all the resin cassettes themselves. Giorgio can speak to the costs on stuff, but I mean, they're really affordable. And I think for somebody who's looking to get into 3D printing, that's one of the best choices that you'd have. Yeah, yeah, by, by the I, way, as a disclaimer, sorry, Giorgio, go ahead. Yeah, go, no, no, go ahead, a disclaimer. Uh, as a disclaimer, uh, you know, Form Labs isn't paying us to do this. Like uh, no. Evident has, you know, no uh, commission from Form Labs. Dr. Bayer has no commission from Form Labs. Our job, I mean, for example, from dentists, we would design, I don't know, three, 4,000 crowns a day, right? I'm actually just trying to make our lives easier by pointing <laughs> out the products that, that, you know, don't give us problems in the products yeah. that do give us problems. So that's my incentive in doing it. And, uh, uh, you know, Georgia, I, I wasn't sure whether I interrupted, so you had something else to add. Yeah, there. I think I'd like to point out something I experienced firsthand uh, working for Formlabs uh, through these years. Like in our engineering DNA, there is this uh, user experience, user interface centric approach to the product. And that's actually the key factor of success that drove Formlabs from just a 3D printing engineering company to actually gaining that much traction on the dental field because the products were th thought through, the software is so user-friendly, the ecosystem of 3D printing, putting the cartridge in the back, changing the resin tank, washing and curing in the, in the form wash and the form cure is just very user-friendly and, and messless. And I think that's, um, that's where Formlabs really wins compared to others. And especially for someone who's starting with, with 3D printing. And um, I'd like to add one thing on the question, like what to start with if you're just starting with 3D printing. So uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, out of the box within the software at Formlabs, you can kind of create a 3D printable model out of the intraoral scan. And then once you've done that, uh, you, have, you unlocked out of the box a couple of treatments that would make sense to produce right away like um, basically retainers, diagnostic models, or a first step aligner and these kind of stuff. So yeah, I just wanted to point uh, that out. And you don't have to be a technical genius to use that software. I mean, you guys have done a good job of making it really easy to use and user-friendly. And if you know how to use a computer, I think you'll be able to figure it out. You know, you're not gonna have to learn some complicated software like ExoCAD to be able to have to go in and figure out how you can trim the models and do all of that stuff. I think you can do it really quickly with the preform software. And, and that's one of the things that oh. you guys have a total package that you not only sell the, the 3D printer and the materials, you also have the way to wash the models and then the way to cure the models. And so that's all a step process that's in the booklet that comes with all the materials. I think that's great. It makes it yeah. really easy for people. I'll give you an example, and I call it the iPhone of 3D printing. It's just super simple because uh, at the same time that Formlabs sent us a printer to demo, another company had sent us another printer to test out. And uh, to our point earlier, uh, you know, analyze the parameters and the fit. And it's now been four months. We still haven't been able to get that other printer to work properly and so uh, don't underestimate the, the importance of ease of use is all I'm saying uh, just uh, in an effort to run through these questions there's a gentleman asking about uh, what he wants to develop resins or she I, I don't know who it is uh, wants to develop 3d printing resins I'd, I'd suggest you reach out to Giorgio at form labs and uh, you know, send us a note if uh, whoever posted that question and, and we'll connect you because uh, that's certainly uh, uh, more a form labs discussion than, than it would yeah. be us. 
Definitely, I'll um, just post here my email address for the attendees. Uh, they can reach out okay. with specific formlabs question and I can redirect them internally to get the answers. Here's a great question. If night guards is a good first use case, are there any treatments you would avoid or do last with 3D printers? Actually, that's a great question to ask. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when you're trying to look at the accuracy with everything, I think trying to wait, you know, for surgical guides, those are a little bit more technical, making sure because those you typically will have, you know, like a, a guide sleeve that goes in there to make sure that things fit correctly. And if, if you can't get your night guards to fit, I would question whether or not you're going to be able to get your surgical guides to fit accurately. So that's one that I would maybe save to last, you know, not that you're going to have to go through hundreds of night guards to get to that point, but make sure that you've got that dialed in. And then, you know, for those, we still like to have a, a 3D printed model just to test fit on it and make sure that everything looks good and aligns. And it's nice too, just to show the patient, hey, here, I've got this case for you. You know, this is all the work that we've done. And then you've got that. And then you know, you look like you're prepared when you show up for surgery and they're looking at stuff. Yeah, and, and uh, on that note, I also wanted to, to answer this question that uh, Bruce asked, uh, Bruce Burgess, what are the common parameters that need to be adjusted? Well, it really depends on, you know, the model of printer, the brand of printer, and how well maintained the printer is. There's there's a, a series of variables and we can, Bruce, if you send us a, a note that the evident will give you an outline of what the main parameters are we look for. But often it's a matter of trial and error and testing uh, the first, I would say half a dozen uh, cases and just adjusting fit, you know, adjusting thickness, uh, depending on on the model and, and temperature and you know, there's just a whole bunch of variables involved, including yeah. uh, how clean your light curing unit is and, and whether the bulbs are still working properly. And sometimes those are overlooked. So uh, yeah. just reach out to us. We're happy to help you out. Uh, Can I follow up just one thing on that? Sure. So like from the CADS uh, part, um, there, there are certain parameters that can be adjusted like the offset and retention and kind of undercut blockouts to, to define how the, the splints will fit in the patient's mouth. But there is definitely a period of adaptation and tweaking to these parameters that is also driven by personal preference of the uh, dentist uh, themselves and, and, and the patient. And especially like also material properties, the thicker um, the splint is, uh, you have different variables going into place and, and, and then these kind of things. So there is that period of dialing in to the tier preference, uh, but we also suggest some starting points for uh, different CAD uh, software and Evident actually has dialed that as a design uh, service to have it work um, out of the box uh, with formaps. I mean, th thanks for the plug, Giorgio, but uh... You know, we've been working for the last three, four months to test out the different parameters with form labs because uh, we wanted to help dentists out and, and make sure that, you know, when they send the case out of the box, we're as close to uh, ideal as possible. And all we have to worry about are personal preferences, uh, which really brings up uh, one of the, the big discussion points we've had in order to make 3D printing work for a practice. And this term was coined by Dr. Bayer, which was SUP, you know, scan, upload, and print, or scan, upload, and produce. And what does that mean to you guys? And what have you seen in the industry that have been rate limiting factors for usage of 3D printing and adoption? You mean for, for me or for Giorgio? Hmm. Sorry, for both of Me. you, so uh, feel oh. free to kick it off. Um, yeah, I think, go ahead, Giorgio. I'll, I'll maybe share two slides to kind of justify that, at least from um, like a chair side perspective or in-house perspective. Um, and that kind of um, can help you understand exactly. 
can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, like when, when we look at a classical digital uh, dentistry workflow, it starts with a scan and there's at some point a design part that needs to be done to design the restoration. And then if we want to focus on 3D printing the manufacturing part, then you have to 3D print that part and then finish and deliver it. So if you look at the workflow today, when we started the webinar, uh, I think 79% of our participants have an intraoral scanner. So you're very familiar with, with the first step. Yep. 3D printing, I, uh, yeah, I, I think not as an overstatement, but we think we're doing our best in making it as, as user-friendly and dentist friendly as possible. So the learning curve and, and the time to, to learn that part is quite straightforward, especially with services like our um, support services where you get an onboarding call for you and your staff to, to learn that process. And then finishing and delivering, it's something that most of dentists are used to. So I think like the, the barrier to adoption in that workflow would be the CAD design part. And that's what we're trying to achieve in, in this partnership uh, with Evident together with Formlabs and Evident is basically overcoming that adoption barrier by looking at the workflow in a different perspective, uh, which is you scan and then, hey, you don't have to worry about the design part. You don't need design skills or a CAD software to do that. And then you can send that job to uh, Evident to design the restoration for you. In that case would be a night guard, a deep programmer or a splint. And then by a press of a button or even sometimes not because we're working on three different ways that you can receive that file to 3D print it. Uh, you can produce that in-house and have it ready um, a couple of, uh, an hour or two later. So that's kind of what we're trying to, to achieve. And for us, uh, if you look at the dentist side, that has been uh, kind of the barrier to, to, to adoption. And that's what we're trying to work on together uh, with Evident. So that's kind of on the dentist side, on the lab side, they, most of the time labs are very used to digital technology and they were the first and early adopters of, of 3D printing and, and form labs technology. So uh, that's how, bit how we look at it uh, yeah. from our side. And I think if you go back to that slide for just a minute, I think that's the beauty of things is like you said, the hurdle is the CAD design software. Labs are already doing that and it's, it's easy for either a dental office to partner with their lab already and have evident facilitate that process. So you're not getting rid of the lab. You can help bring the lab into that digital workflow if you want to choose to do that. The other component is, you know, if you think about, we can all probably cook a steak, we can all cook a hamburger on the grill, you know, but there's times where you want to go out to dinner and you want to enjoy yourself, time with the family, time with your friends. So you're going to a restaurant to have somebody else do that work for you. That's essentially what you're doing here. So you don't have to be a digital master with ExoCAD or 3Shape or any kind of design software. You don't have to learn any of that. You're basically taking the tools that you already have, which is your scanner, you're using Evident to be able to design whatever appliance or you know something that you're wanting for your practice you're having that 3d printer in the practice to be able to manufacture that and even if you're outsourcing the design through evident to your dental lab they can do the 3d printer and send it to you you know it's really kind of facilitating that hurdle with the cad software so you don't have to learn any additional skill set other than maybe if you're bringing a 3d printer into your practice you just have to learn how that works and how you wash and cure stuff and then that's really it there's not a whole lot of software knowledge that you have to gain. You don't have to spend time, you know, on a weekend or during the week trying to figure out how to design all this stuff because it can take time. You know, and if you're at a really busy practice, there's not going to be time in the day to be able to do all that stuff, plus to manage a 3D printer. So I think that's where that that component that evidence bringing to the table now is, is going to be huge for a lot of people. Yeah, we've had a lot of questions on how do I learn to design this or what design software should I use? And I mean, my advice, when I look at dentists, and like I said, we, we deal with thousands of dentists around the world. There's, I, I put them in three buckets. There's a bucket that I call the geeks that, you know, Chris, you're one of those. I say that with all love and, sure. and attention. You love geeking out on this stuff. 
Yeah, that's right. And, that's a big and compliment. So am I. Actually, I, mean, I would say. Yeah, that, we that, like to know I mean, how things work. Geek out. Yeah, and and that's awesome. You know, I mean, I I think just factor in that there's a cost to education software and the annual subscription to that, and that's about at least $5,000 a year by the time you amortize, you know, how often you have to upgrade the software, what the subscription costs are, and then just keeping up with training. And yeah. so if you're cool with that, then you like to geek out on that stuff. I mean, A, you can call us too, and we'll help you figure stuff out and then, you know, uh, be happy and enjoy it. Then there's the second, which is uh, the guys that want it producing in their in their practices. And I mean, for those guys, they tend to send the work to us and it becomes a seamless incorporation. And then not only that, we find them labs that are digital savvy, that are part of the evident network because face it, not every lab understands digital. And, sure. and not only that, not, in, it, not every lab understands milling or printing or both. And so matching that to your expectations is also important. Then the third piece is, are just practices that want to use 3D printing for the occasional patient that uh, can't fly in and out or you know, can't come back for a second appointment. And that's the tricky one because they typically don't use the technology often enough to get proficient at it. And so to me, those are the guys that really need to be calibrated with people like us so that when they do turn it on, you know, they're not going through the hassle of relearning everything and they can get it activated on demand. Yeah. So, I mean, that's my two bits. What do you guys think? At least from our side and our understanding of the market, we have to set kind of realistic expectations. We are not saying that the 3D printers in clinic will ever replace a lab. We are not saying to dentists, hey, this is the only thing you're gonna need to produce any kind of restoration in your, in your clinic. What we're offering here is, is an affordable solution that uh, um, opens up so many opportunities and specific cases where you can leverage it. Whether it's a rush case, um, whether it's, uh, it's a package that didn't arrive on time and you need to produce it in-house, whether it's just driven by curiosity that you want to produce things in-house. It's, it's an affordable uh, solution that can just be there in the clinic and then you can kind of scale up what you're producing on it and get comfortable with it. So we're kind of providing a solution that should be a necessity in the clinic, but it doesn't mean that you need to use it for everything, but it has to be there. That's kind of the message we're sending. Well, and two, if you think about it from an infection control standpoint, you're taking a scan and then, you know, if you're, if you're doing a traditional impression, you're trying to disinfect that hopefully before you send it to a lab, the lab's got to take that. They'll probably disinfect it with their protocol. And if you've got alginates, you're trying to disinfect the alginates, which can cause inaccuracies in the alginates. You know, if you're 3d printing a model, that's not going to be infected with anything. You know, it's just based as long as you don't have somebody who's spitting in the resin tank, you know, you're just sending that model. If you need to, you can send that to the lab. You know, and they can use that to, to put a wax up on there if they need to, if they're not digitally inclined to be able to do stuff. So like you said, it's, it's, it's something that you can fractionate out in your practice and be able to outsource some of the stuff that you need, even with some of the 3D prints that you have. And it's less infection control that's going out in the world. And the same thing, if your lab's using 3D printing, you're a little bit safer having that come back versus having a stone model that may be contaminated just from the, the process. You know, if somebody forgot to, to spray a specific area of an impression, you could have transfer over onto a model and you know, then that becomes a big issue. So being able to take different parts and making that work into your practice, how you need to. And in times with COVID, I mean, there were a lot of times where just because we could 3D print a night guard, we were able to save patients because we're like, hey, you know what? Shipping all got disrupted. We're able to do this in-house so we can do it for you really quickly. We're not having to wait for the lab, you know, we're not having to wait for FedEx to deliver or UPS to deliver and around holiday times, you know, for this past holiday season, it was horrible. We had a lot of stuff that was coming in from, 
you know, FedEx and UPS that either got misplaced, it was delayed, we kept getting messages, it was delayed. So being able to have the comfort of, hey, we can just manufacture it in house, we can, we can print those splits, splints, we're not having to worry about, you know, the time frame for UPS for, for lab cases, that really helps, you know, and if you have a 3D printer, and you have a lab that's capable of being able to do that, you can have them design it, and then they just send you the file, and then you're printing it. So Evident can facilitate that. So, you know, like we were talking about the sub-concept is you're just scanning it, you're uploading it to Evident, and in the morning you come in, it's a beautiful thing. You've got a file you can just drop into the Formlabs printer software or your printer software, and you're ready to go. You just hit print, and you've got an appliance that is ready in probably an hour or two. So we've got a bunch of questions that are uh, a bit more specific, and I wanted to jump on them if uh, you guys don't mind, because th there were uh, a lot of uh, viewers today that have said we already have printers, we understand scanning. And so there's some uh, treatment specific questions. Like one of them, we have some recent difficult edentulous cases. And I would like to scan and make some special trays in house. Is this possible? And what resin would be best? So they are treatment specific. What do you think? Treatment specific resins. I would say Giorgio can can talk about the specific resins okay. for Form Labs. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely um, could do that. I think the sensitive part in here is how 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 deep we want to go into that. Let me try <laughs> to simplify it. So I, I think there there are a couple of questions uh, here. Like Paolo and Dr. Bear are sweating. Look at George is pulling out his slides again. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. But, but, no, no, we, we've got the hook, Giorgio. We, we've got the hook here that we're going to hook your slides. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make it simple without those slides. So a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself before starting printing. So uh, first is, what do I need to print? Is it for orthodontics? Is it for restorative? And, and then that will govern kind of uh, in which direction and which resin you're picking. And then the next question will be, hey, will this be in contact with patient tissue? And then there are possible, two possible answers to that. If yes, then, then you need to choose biocompatible resins. Okay. And then depending on the application that you're doing, uh, you can narrow that uh, decision to the specific indication or the appliance that you're trying to produce. So I didn't get the question properly, but uh, one of our resins that we have in the portfolio is the denture base and denture teeth resin. So I thought because it was an edentulous um, case scan, uh, maybe you were referring to that. So we have that in our portfolio of resins, which is a denture teeth and base um, resins where you can produce for less than $8.5 or less than $10 a full denture. Um, maybe what I can do really quickly in here is uh, your worst nightmare is the slides. Just quickly. Oh man, where's the hook? Slides, let's let's slides get are good. the hook. No. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me just give you a quick rundown on, on, on these um, uh, up, like basically uh, categories and, and, and um, applications and resins. So one application is a restorative model. We have specific resins for that. And then you can see always on the bottom of the right, uh, on the bottom right of the screen, the cost per part to produce that in resin material. So a quad would cost you less than $5, a full arch would cost you less than $7. And this is kind of the gypsum-like model material. Um, this is a resin for quickly printing models for thermoforming aligners. I think Dr. Bayer, you've tried that resin and loved it. it's called the draft uh, yeah. resin and it costs less than $2 for the whole shoe. And then you can print that in less than 20 minutes at 200 microns. That's the surgical guide resin also for um, a full, uh, full case, full mouse case. Uh, this is kind of the cost per, per guide. And then we recently re released our indirect bonding tray resin, IBT, and then costs less than $8 in material to, to produce that. Then this is a castable resin. If you still think that you want to produce metallo uh, ceramic uh, frames, you can uh, 3D print in castable resin and cast it uh, into metal later on. Also for custom trays, we have a solution. 
And then for spent and night guards, that's what Dr. Bayer was speaking about. Imagine that the cost of material is less than $4 to print that. And finally, some recent innovations, temporary restorations for bridges up to seven units. This is the cost per unit. Dentures, base and teeth, less than $9 for uh, a full denture. And then finally, a kind of groundbreaking thing, the permanent restorations with permanent crown where you can 3D print a crown for less than $3 uh, per unit. So I think that's, uh, that's it from like application point of view. So if you a quick rundown on the applications that are enabled with the Form 3D and the resin range of Formlabs. Awesome, Giorgio, and thank you. I made it quick. So. <laughs> that's right. That was good. No, that's fine. Uh, and I, I think I know uh, we've got a few questions on whether the, uh, the, for example, the tray, you know, it's only contacting uh, the gums for two minutes and does it matter? You know, I, this is what I tell people. I go, look guys, don't experiment. You never know if it'll come to to bite you, just use the materials for their approved their purposes. Delivered. Because from a legal perspective, if something ever happens, you know, and we we hope that never does, what the uh, uh, the last thing you'd like is someone saying you were using a material for uh, a purpose that it wasn't approved for. And that's my just two bits to share with everyone. And saving two pennies is not worth the long term risk. Uh, that's my two bits. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we've got a few, we've got 20 other questions on the, on the docket here, and we've got eight minutes to go, you know, and so uh, very, A, I'm, I'm flattered that so many people are asking. Uh, so I've got a, a question to ask everyone here on the chat, and it's a selfish one, which is, we're trying to describe to people what we do at the evidence because it's hard to explain to people that someone actually has to design all these digital files. You know, when a dentist scans or when a lab digitizes your impression, it goes to the cloud and then what? What happens to it? Well, <laughs> there's actually people like us who have invested, you know, millions and millions of dollars to go and turn these scans and figure out how to design them into cases. And, and then we use artificial intelligence to predict what cases actually will look better, what cases won't. So the technology behind that is uh, hugely sophisticated. So, but we don't know how to describe ourselves to the dental market. So I'm just throwing it out there. If anyone gives us an idea of how we explain what the evidence does to the dental market, to the dentist market, uh, you'll get the credit from us to do evident designs of $500 just for throwing it out there and saying, thank you. So- Can I and... try my luck? Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you Fire just- Fire away, Georgia, you'll get the mountain bike credit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, we got a deal in here. Sending your mountain bikes. I, I, and the Whistler bike pass for the list. Okay, <laughs> done deal. That. Okay, no, but uh, you described that as the iPhone of 3D printing. I'll say maybe Facebook of dentistry. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You know, oddly enough, we toyed with that in that, uh, you know, we're the community that refers to everyone. Because of the uh, hub as well, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. And uh, so that's a, you know, that, I'm telling you, you're 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 the only advisor right now, so uh, <laughs> you might be winning that uh, Whistler mountain bike pass, regardless. Um, I, did I say seasonal uh, or <laughs> <laughs> one time only, one time use? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, uh, anything to throw in there, uh, Chris? <laughs> I think you I mean you guys are the perfect integration partner, I think, for a, a digital dental practice because you're allowing somebody who's already digitally scanning to be able to fast forward into 3D printing in the practice. They're not having to pick up and try to learn another skill set. They're just jumping forward into 3D printing and really just, you know, 
they're going to scan, upload, and print. That's it. That's all they're going to have to do. They're not going to have to scan, then figure out how to design and figure out how, you know, to go through the workflow and which material is going to be here and how's it going to fit and go through all of the technical side of everything. So, you know, you're just that facilitator. And I think that's a huge component that people overlook. You know, they might buy the printer first and then they're trying to figure out how to get the software to work with the printer. Whereas now you just have to buy the printer, you know, and if you've already got the scanner, like, you know, 70 plus percent of the people are already have, you're using evident to facilitate that process. And maybe down the road, you want to start dabbling in some of the softwares to be able to design some stuff yourself. But, you know, the busier you get, the more you 3D print, the more you're going to find how nice it is to be able to outsource some of that so you're not trying to carve out parts of your day to be able to design that you can give it to somebody who probably takes five to ten minutes to do something that may take you 30 to 60 minutes to do and there's a huge value in that if you have to do that for five cases that adds up at the end of your day and you're probably going to have to find another day or weekend to be able to do all of that work on top of trying to find time to print it all you know and that's where the solution that you guys have is amazing and I think you know depending I don't want to put the cart before the horse and, and spill the beans with everything but I think once they see that component to it people who don't want to utilize that they're going to have to learn how to use a software and then how to to use the 3d printer along with that well I, I know on that note it's a great segue because uh, we uh, first we have a couple of last polls if anyone's interested in buying a 3d printer and uh, the second is, if they're interested in getting their CE credits, please let us know. And again, uh, we'll get the Formlabs team to reach out to you. We have no skin on this game. Uh, other than, as I say that, we're also happy to announce that we've partnered up with Formlabs to offer uh, a special package to people that buy Formlabs printers. And, Giorgio, do you want to touch on that? Uh, yeah, very quickly, um, since especially for the people who stayed to the end of the webinar. So ah, that's Dr. Bayer's practice, actually the setup in there, quite uh, seamless. But that's, that's not kind of, um, yeah, the point here is basically uh, just to, to understand a bit the economics, this is the Form 3B complete package, which comes with the printer, resin tank, uh, dental model resin, build platform, finish kit, and the wash and cure to finalize. And inclusive our like state-of-the-art dental service plan, where our dental agents onboard you as, as a new customer, teach you how to use your printer, and especially to the staff as well. And that gives you to um, a lot of uh, privileged support as well as part of the service for like email, phone, and the hot swap service. If the printer, something goes wrong with the printer, you get um, a quick exchange of the printer. And the whole package is for less than $6,000. So what you're basically doing with Evident is we're trying to promote that workflow where you outsource the design. And, and then on, on top of that, we're just making it so attractive that it's a no brainer to, to jump on that opportunity. So until April 30th, uh, we're offering with every Form 3B complete package, actually evident is, is basically supporting us and offering through that partnership, $1,000, or if you're in the European Union, that would be around 800 euros of design credit, uh, which will be valid until July 30th from the moment you activate them. So out of the box, you get a printer, you get also access to $1,000 of design service from Evident. That's, I don't know how many splints in there. Um, and then basically the return on investment is kind of guaranteed with the design credits because you're gonna use them and then you're gonna 3D print and deliver those appliances. Just as a fun thought, uh, one of our opinion leaders did a study and they paid back their printer with 40 retainer cases. So that's like one of the very core simple treatments to yep. justify the ROI. So it's super thank simple. you very much, I mean, Paolo and the Evident team who worked hard in getting this through. That's an awesome deal. And, and uh, again, as I've said to everyone, our mission at Evident is to design the future of dentistry, right? And, and so we're slowly connecting the different companies. And in the middle of that is us providing the design services to make all this equipment useful. And so that's our mission, that's our goal. And 
like I said earlier, we have no commission from form labs for selling their printers. We don't carry them. But what we do want to do is make those printers useful. And the only way they're going to be useful, whether you have a lab or a, uh, whether you're a full-scale commercial lab or an in-house lab in the dental practice, is really someone to design the cases. And that's what we do. So we're at the top of the hour. I just wanted to thank you. Giorgio, thanks for our, your patience with us. And Chris, likewise, yeah. thanks for always entertaining us. And uh, you guys have such a wealth of knowledge. Uh, for all the folks that we didn't get to their questions, I still have 25 questions left on my, on my stack here. We're going to email your response and uh, really appreciate you spending the time with us. I hope you found it worthwhile and uh, take care and stay safe. Thank you very okay, much. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.